So cone snail anatomy is a little different than what most people would think in, in terms of their actual appendages and, and what's going on. The first is this long proboscis here, which uh, the cone snail uses to reach out and, and get closer to its prey without startling it. The other is this short tube here, which we call the siphon, which is actually a, a portion of an enrolled mantle that the cone snail can roll together and suck water through which flows over the gills, because cone snails use gills to breathe rather than lungs. One of the interesting parts about that is right before the gills, there's a special hemosensory organ called the osphradium. And this, we think, is mostly what the cone snail uses to sense its external environment. So it both smells and tastes the water as it flows through over the siphon. Now, in predatory gastropods like these, the siphon can move around and be extended in certain directions so that the snail can actually point and sniff in each direction, narrowing down and, and finding its prey and traveling towards the scent rather than just running around in circles trying to find out what's giving off the scent. Uh, what we normally think of as the mouth is actually a false mouth that we call the rostrum. The true mouth is actually at the tip of the proboscis itself. Okay, that's, that's the area that opens up and swallows food and that's where everything's digested. But at the time of when a cone snail stings, it has the tooth in its, in its true mouth. And so it uses the rostrum to surround the fish after it's been engulfed. So what we think of as a mouth is not truly a mouth, but it, it functions as such.